r slash credit. What's the most hurtful thing you've overheard about yourself by accident? Wow, where to start? Keeping in mind most of these were in person, so I have no idea what was said in the background. Around grade 4, 1992-ish, it was a pretty hot day during the summer, so I was just wearing shorts, no shirt. My dad gets home from work and says go, put on a shirt, you look like a poisoned pup. I've had some pretty annoying image problems since then. Fast forward about a year and I was on my rollerblades, practicing in our Carl D. Saxon crossovers, forward and reverse, for about two weeks or so. I was pretty proud of this having watched hockey all winter and watching how they skated so I could be like that. I was ready to show my parents this thing I had worked on. So I asked if they would come outside to watch. My dad's reaction when I described my practice and where I was at was don't flatter yourself. Sometime between this next incident, I overheard my parents and their friends talking quietly about how if I was born a girl, they wouldn't have had any more kids. I'm not sure if this hurt me more or if I felt really bad for my sister, but I've never been able to shake the emotions of feeling like a burden to my parents my entire life. I have one older brother, one younger sister. A few years later I'm in the car with my mom and younger sister. Seas was about 13 or so. They're in the front seat, I'm in the back, and I think they forgot I was there or maybe I had on earphones and music wasn't too loud. Regardless. My sister asks my mom what she thought the future would be like, like when she would get married, that sort of thing. My mom described this fairy tale for her, it sounded really nice. Then ended the story with I'm not sure about your brother, he'll probably die alone, or get married and divorced very early and have no one. Really? Fucking ouch. Oddly enough, I did get married, and was married for almost 10 years. It felt just short as I couldn't handle carrying my partner any longer. We had a child together who was about 18 months old at that time, and I felt like I was taking care of two children as a single dad. I guess having a child means you get to go on eternity leave the rest of your life. After talking this out with her on numerous occasions I finally ended it. It was somewhat mutual. 50 over 50 custody. Friendly communication afterwards and co-parenting. Etc. I drove to my parents house 600 kilometers away to talk with them. I didn't know who else to talk to about it besides friends. And my friends suggested I also include my family as they would have my back. After telling them the story over a cup of tea, their response was, so there's no hope of making it work. I responded that no I didn't believe so, that I'd fallen out of love for her. Their follow up was something like, well that's too bad good night. I sat in the dark there for a few hours. I never understood the phrase beside myself before that. I heard them have a really passionate and meaningful conversation over the phone with my ex so the next day, one sided, it was speakerphone but obvious who they were talking to. I packed up and left during the call. I had planned to spend a few nights left after one. I really don't want to say some of the things I heard. It's pretty tough just thinking about it. I suppose things have improved since then. My ex so gets invited out for yearly type trips and spends a lot of time with my parents. I still have a really good relationship with my sister and her family and I haven't really talked with my parents for about 5 years since the trip to tell them about the pending separation. For those who are worried, if any, I'm really okay now. I'm in an amazing relationship and I've been able to shed the feelings around you have to love your parents. No one has to love anyone who obviously doesn't love them back. While this was tough to write out, I've never told this stuff to anyone. Thanks for listening Reddit. Edit. Typus. Up until I was in 4th grade, I was under the impression that my little brother and I shared the same father. My mom and him divorced when I was in 3rd grade and at first, we would spend every other weekend with him. But then his girlfriend got pregnant and had a little girl not long after she gave birth. Him and his teenage son called and left some really nasty voicemails on my mum's answering machine. This was the 90s so the voicemail come out of a speaker for everyone to hear. My mom didn't realize what was being said until it was too late. And that's how I found out that he wasn't my real dad. They said I wasn't allowed to come back to his house because he had a real daughter. Now that was really his by blood and they called my mom a bunch of nasty names and called me a bastard. 
I had no idea that this man wasn't my daddy. I was only two when my little brother was born, and they married right after that. He had been my daddy for as far back as I could remember. I was devastated. He had his real daughter, so he threw me away like yesterday's trash. I never admit it, but it broke my heart. It's a halluva way to find out something like that, especially for a fourth grader. It broke my mom's heart for me. I cried for hours that night, and she held me and cried right along with me. She must have said she was sorry 100 times. After a few days, my sadness melted into anger and eventually hatred for that man. Looking back, I feel lucky in a way. He has been a truly terrible daddy to my younger brother. My brother would try to call him, and he'd hardly ever answer. Then he changed his number and my brother didn't have any contact with him for years. It really fucked with my brother's head, he had a lot, if anger issues, when he got to be a teenager. I had hardened my heart to that man years ago, and told myself I didn't need a father, as long as I had our mama, but my brother just couldn't do it. My mom has been just an amazing parent, but he wanted a daddy, his daddy. Watching my little brother struggle, made me despise that sorry excuse for a man even more. My brother is 26 now, and has two sons of his own. His dad saw my oldest nephew once, and has never seen the youngest. All these years later, and he's still a piece of shit. Years later, when I was 16 or 17, I worked part time at Taco Bell, and one day, when I was working the front register, this guy walks up to the counter, and asks me if I know who he is. I told him no, I have no idea who you are, and then he tells me my full name, my brother's full name, and my mum's too, so now I'm good, and freaked out thinking I've got me a stalker or something turns out, it was the teenage son I mentioned, my brother's half brother. This kid had some serious issues, my brother and I were terrified of him as kids. He asks to talk to me for a minute, so I went on break and he actually apologized to me for all the terrible things he did to me. He said it was something that had always weighed heavy on his mind and he didn't expect forgiveness, but he still wanted to apologize. Turned out, he had came to Taco Bell three times before, but kept chickening out. I could hear the sincerity in his voice and I could read it on his face, so I decided to give him my forgiveness, and it felt amazing. We were standing in the parking lot, both of us crying like a couple of babies. I never realized how much I had held on to all of that, it felt as if the forgiveness had set me free in a way. <laughs> kind of fits in this thread, so I'll say it. Years ago, in 2014 and 2015, my mom dated a guy twice. The relationship lasted half a year or less both times. I thought he was the best guy ever for my mother up until my mother and I had a talk and she told me he's an alcoholic. I didn't see it then. Boy did I see it afterwards. He'd get drunk almost every night. He would also get mad at his kids and me if we approached him about his alcohol drinking. One day, in 2015, I was at his house and he was drinking. I later told him I wasn't comfortable with him drinking. He then went on about how he didn't have a good mother like I did, how he was at his home, and that I wasn't allowed to judge him, I wasn't judging him in any way, asked if I wanted to deal with the crap his mother put him through, etc. All because I told him I wasn't comfortable with him drinking, because he has a problem. He was crying and drunk while telling me this. I went downstairs in the basement and locked myself in the bathroom afterwards. I was beyond uncomfortable. I texted my mother and begged her to come to his house and begged for us to go to our own house that night, which we did. I eventually came out of the bathroom and found his youngest son crying because he was drunk and his oldest son was upstairs talking to him. I did not hear this myself, but one of his kids told me he said this about me, or some juggler 20 is a fucking asshole. He had called me awesome multiple times beforehand, and then he called me an asshole. This was also after I picked his kids up multiple times from daycare and babysat them for him. My mom and him had a talk outside later that night and my mom broke up with him. He hugged me before we left and we did our handshake one more time. We went home and I received multiple texts from him blaming me for the breakup and asking me if I was gonna cry to mommy and that me complaining to my mom about his drinking made that incident be the end of their relationship, etc. It took all I had in me to not text him back telling him to go fuck himself. He apologized to me a week later for what happened which saved the relationship for another month. 
That month, him and I barely had any fun times together. Pretty sure this incident is the reason. My mother broke up with him a month after though and got another boyfriend who she's still with today. I consider that guy my stepdad. We are much happier with the guy she's dating now. He has an awesome daughter who I consider as my stepsister. Life's good now. Haven't heard or seen her ex in a long time now and I don't care to know about him. The last I heard, he hasn't quit drinking yet. I feel bad for the next girl he will date and her kids slash kids if she has any and especially his kids. It sucks but it is what it is. When I was a junior in college I moved off campus with one of my fraternity brothers. Thought it was going to be cool because it was his idea and he had approached me about it. Met this girl a couple days into the full term and hit it off pretty well. After a few weeks I wanted to progress things a little more, pretty much FWB status up to this point, but she wasn't down for it. Fast forward a couple months and my roommate comes out of his room with his laptop. I'm sitting on the couch watching TV, and he comes and sits down on the other end. He sets his computer on the coffee table and then walks back into his room, presumably he forgot something and apparently forgot about his shit talking session. Right there on the screen was his Facebook chat log with a girl blasting me over stupid shit. To her credit, about the only credit she gets, she just kind of shrugged it off but let him continue his tirade. I just quickly walked in my room so that he didn't come back out seeing me just staring at his computer and waited for him to come back. Pretended like nothing happened because causing a fight over it would do nothing. I should point out that at this point despite her insistence on not progressing our relationship she's obviously starting to get at least somewhat emotionally attached. She even went so far as to get mad at me for a couple days because she had a bad dream in which I did something with another girl. This added to the constant cold shoulders I'd get every time she'd find out that I'm out with friends. If I even so much as mentioned a female name. When she'd ask who all I was with all I would get in response is K, this is all, while spending 3 to 5 nights a week staying at my place and sleeping with me, both kinds. I should also add that she was one of those girls who flirts with literally anything that pays attention to her and whenever called on it responds with some BS like, that's just how I get to know someone. I'm a friendly person. Needless to say I'm thoroughly confused at the constant mixed signals. Now it's Christmas break and everyone goes home for the holidays. My rumor just happens to be from the same hometown as her, so I'm sure most of you can guess what this leads to. His birthday is December 24th, and it turns out she went over to his house for a party. Apparently the present she got for him was herself. This part 1 didn't find out until a couple weeks later, when I finally confronted her on her bullshit. I should add that earlier that day she asked if I wanted to come down to her house and have Christmas with her family. I already had plans with my family, but I convinced my mom that I really wanted to go. Thinking about this part makes me cringe even to this day and hopped in my car and drove 3 hours to her house on Christmas morning. Stayed there a couple days, including relations, and left a couple days before New Year's. At this point I can't remember how it all came to a head, but eventually we had a huge fight, and I found out about what they did. He of course got mad at me for getting mad at him. Dude it's not like you were dating or anything, he tells me. I told you I didn't want anything more, she tells me. At this point I'm beyond done, so I tell them both to go fuck themselves. Correction. Go fuck each other. I still had to deal with him for another 6 months, 1 year lease, but she got kicked to the curb by me. I refused to interact with her, but that was often difficult, because my asshole roommate would keep bringing her around to our parties. Don't talk to either one of them anymore. Jokes on her though. She ended up dropping out of college, and becoming a heroin addict, and my anger was replaced with pity. I wouldn't wish that on anyone, but I can't say I didn't feel the slightest bit validated when I found out it happened. Now obviously this whole thing had huge red flags that I actively chose to ignore, stupidly thought I could make it work if I hung in there, but these two were over the top levels of sleazy. A little backstory and obligatory apology for doing this on mobile, so autocorrect might f me. I was in the Marine Corps for 5 years and a few months. Before I got out, my father-in-law was dying of cancer. My wife moved back to Ohio. I was stationed in North Carolina at the time before I got out. 
to set up an apartment for us, and we got an extra room for my father-in-law to live with us, because his house was a hoarder's wet dream and that's likely where the cancer came from, because of busted pipes and black mold everywhere. My brother-in-law is 5 days younger than me and is a definition of an insult. He lived in the house with my father-in-law, had a crap job at Toys R Us, rip, and saw nothing wrong with those living conditions. Right before I got out, my father-in-law passed away. We inherited the house along with my wife's siblings, and we all agreed that any inherited money would be used to remodel the house to its original state pre-hoarding, then divide it amongst the siblings, and that we would have the house appraised in me, and my wife would buy their shares of the house. Incel brother-in-law would move in with us during the remodel until he could find another place to live. I did the remodel myself. I replaced every piece of drywall, most of the studs, all the cabinets, anything in the interior of the house, I did. Brother-in-law lived with us for 3 years. He got the smallest room because he couldn't afford to pay rent, and let me tell you, this room was the size of a large closet. Has easily 350 pounds, and I don't know how he could even move in there. We had several issues with him having dozens of pizza boxes in there, when the door opened Mountain Dew cans would pour out. Now we get to the ascredit question. At a family gathering, I think it was Thanksgiving or something, as I was walking into a room, I heard him and all of my in-law family talking about how my brother-in-law should be considered the man of the house, and how me making him live in that small room was abuse, and how we should have remodeled the back living room into a second master bedroom and he should have gotten that room. I couldn't believe it. He had lived there for 3 years, rent free, caused damage to the only room we allowed him. It's a 3 bedroom house, we took the master and gave the second room to my son as a nursery, so he got the small room, which was his room for his entire childhood. I rebuilt that house from the studs in and asked him for help, granted he wouldn't have known what he was doing, but he could have held things for me, so I didn't have to do it solo. I put my blood into that house to save all the siblings inheritance money from a professional. Then I bought the house from them at the remodeled appraised price, yet he should be the man of the house and I had been abusing him. Still shocked. I've been kinda messed up the last 7 MTHS because my BFF of 15 years just stopped talking to me. Don't know if I did something wrong or what. We live in different states but talked 5 days a week and visited often. All of a sudden she stopped answering when I called. Who does that to a person they've supposedly cared about? Definitely makes me question a lot of things. How good of a friend I am. How I choose friends. Do I attract shitty people? Made me isolate myself further over the summer. Why even try to have friends? My dog likes me. I'll stick with that. As someone who went through something similar, I don't know what happened. Over 13 years of friendship, this friend would verbally communicate to me that she didn't want to be my friend twice before, each time I had a new boyfriend. With my last relationship, we married, she kind of just distanced herself before we got engaged. It's not like we weren't hanging out, we hung out a lot, and I didn't talk about my relationship in detail because, well, she gave shitty advice. She deleted me off Instagram, then called me one day to ask if she could apply at my job. I asked why she'd ask, she said she wanted to make sure we'd be cool. Considering nothing bad was said or done before that, it was so confusing. I took that as another back quote I don't want to be your friend anymore moment. Third time. It hurt me to not invite her to our wedding a year later, and the last time we spoke was two weeks after I got engaged, before that another month. I just didn't see a reason to after our last conversation of the job. I never understood why she would continually choose to unfriend me, and at first I thought maybe I was a bad friend whenever I had a boyfriend. But, the man I married, we were in a long distance so her and I hung out every weekend. I was there for her through a lot of crazy stuff. It made me wonder, and still makes me wonder, if I'm a shitty person, but I have other long term friends, same amount of time, who have never ever acted in such a way, even through rough stuff. I'm sorry. Sometimes people push away those they are closest to. I haven't tried reaching out to her. I probably won't ever. I do believe people sometimes don't even have a true reason for their actions. Edit. Thanks so much for all the responses. I thought my reply would get buried, but seems like this happens a lot. Sometimes we don't get the answers we want in life, 
but all we can do is hope for the best for others. I'll always cherish the memories we had as friends and I really hope she lives a full long life if we never catch up again. I was in college in the earlier days of Facebook when the feed was a new feature. In my feed, I see that these girls I was friendly with posted a picture album of themselves posing with a hanging mobile that they made like an art project. In the mobile, hanging there from a coat hanger, were photos of really creepy skeevy guys, and also pictures of guys at our school that were generally known to be a little weird. I saw a picture of myself hanging from it too, and was devastated. These were girls I knew who were friends of mine. I wrote them a note confronting them about it, but did it in a nice way telling them I was deeply hurt to see myself on there, and apologizing if I ever offended them in any way. They were super embarrassed, but also maturely apologetic, and insisted they would prefer to be my friend. They also rightfully pointed out character traits in me that led them to want to put my picture there in the first place, and it gave me some good introspection to change myself for the better. This was 10 years ago, and I still think about it. Still have the message history in Facebook from back then too. Edit. A lot of people are asking what the character traits were that they cited to me. Not gonna lie, some of this stuff makes me look bad. Some background. We were friendly because I was in a student organization slash club for stand-up comedy with them. I did stand up at the time and some point of my abrasiveness spilled over into my real life and I did say some shitty and true things. Here's her response. I changed their names to girl A and girl B. Girl A, Eric. You have every reason to be angry and hurt. I have no good excuse or explanation. That would be sufficient. And both girl B and I are truly, truly sorry for any pain or sadness we have caused. I feel even worse about this because I know I exploded at you recently and was making an effort to be nicer and more friendlier than I was in the past. I know that this has completely disqualified anything I have said or done in attempts to move forward. The only thing I can say I guess is that yes, you have upset me in the past. That does not mean that I had any right to yell at you like I did that night or do what we just did. However, sometimes I feel like you can be downright malicious to our friends. To try to explain why you've put me off so much, I guess it's because you will say bad, often untrue things about others to make yourself appear better. Some things I have heard you say about how you cheat on your girlfriend because she's fat or telling your best friend he's not a good comedian when you're drunk upsets me and turns me off to being your friend. But again, this is not the place for me to tell you what's wrong with you because it's me who really fucked up this time. I feel like a lot of this just sounds like contorted, generic bullshit that I wrote just to mull things over, but I promise you it's an honest apology. The idea behind the mobile is yes, guys who have creeped us out in the past. I guess because you've made some pretty overtly sexual remarks to me that I put you up there. If it helps, it had nothing to do with anything with physical appearance, meaning we didn't chose guys because they were ugly. Eric, I truly feel terrible. I feel horrible for constructing it to begin with, and then for you seeing it, and feeling extremely hurt. I never ever would want to make you or any other person cry. I really honor the maturity in which you took this. If I had seen something like this with my face on it, I would blocked and defriended the person. You made a lot of effort to deal with our vast immaturity like an actual adult would. I don't know what else to say other than the fact that I'm completely embarrassed, ashamed, and sorry for my stupid actions, although I can't imagine how you feel. I promise you that girl B and I are good people, but we do have our faults. You saw an uglier side of us, and I'm sorry you had to be involved. I absolutely do want to be your friend, and not just because I'm trying to be nice or sympathetic. In the past, when I felt like you weren't trying to overcompensate, we really got along well. I completely understand if you want nothing to do with me again, which makes me kick myself even more for killing our friendship. However, if you still feel like we can be friends, I'm here 100%. If you'd like, we can grab dinner and talk about it some more. I'll pay. I'm really sorry Eric. I hope you have it in you to forgive us. I really feel horrible for what I've done and the pain I've caused. Regards, Girl A. 
it was about 9 years ago, and I was getting married, so a hen's night was in order. I had originally wanted to book a bus and have a wine tour of a nearby vineyard, but my bridesmaid said it wasn't a good idea because not everyone liked wine. Ideas were thrown back and forth and eventually it was settled for a night in the city with laser bowling and karaoke with pizza and drinks. We'd have our own room, and I was so excited to get out of my comfort zone and have a fun night. I invited my small group of friends, some family and took the opportunity to ask some girls I knew through a bridesmaid but hadn't taken it to the next level. I thought I would like to get to know them better and expand my social group, so I asked them along and they accepted my invite. I'm very much an introvert, quiet and can be nervous in social situations around new people, so this was a big step for me. On the night I was super pumped but worried that everyone was having a good time. These ladies arrived an hour late, pizza had to start about 20 minutes after we arrived otherwise we'd lose our bowling time and it would change our booking for karaoke. So we couldn't wait any longer and started to eat and drink, when they arrived they were pissed that we'd started without them. Not thinking much of it, because it was my night, I apologized then enjoyed drinking and bowling followed by karaoke. I was having a blast and hoped everyone was too. After a few beverages I needed to go to the ladies. As I walk in I hear those ladies talking at the mirrors, fixing their macube. Lady 1, OMG, this is the worst hen's night I've ever been to. Lady 2, yes. What was she thinking? Who thinks bowling and karaoke would be a good time? L1, what a loser. She started the party without us too. Let's get out of this hole and go clubbing. A mutual friend was standing there nodding her head at both ladies. As I walked in I had stopped to say hello and ask about how they're enjoying themselves. But instead heard everything. Their heads turn and their eyes all stare straight into mine. I stand there gaping like a fish, say nothing, turn my heels and lock myself in the toilet cubicle to have a cry and meltdown. I'm not sure how long I was in there, but long enough for people to notice and come find me. Both ladies left without saying a word, never apologized despite seeing them at mutual friends get together. TLDR, socially awkward me had a hen's night that I thought was awesome, tried to use it as an opportunity to make new friends. Walk into ladies in the bathroom to hear them bitching about me and the hen's night being the worst ever. Cried in a toilet cubicle. In sophomore year of high school I had three girls who bullied me mercilessly. I heard a lot of things that hurt my feelings, but the worst one was this one day when my dad was helping me carry things into school for a project. We passed by one of the girls with some of her friends who didn't know me, and I heard her go, why does she dress like that? She's so fucking weird she's literally always fucking happy about every little thing it's so fucking annoying really loud. My dad and I both heard it. He is very socially awkward, so he couldn't bring himself to say anything. He also didn't want to acknowledge that he heard it because I think he thinks I didn't want him to bring it up. I just kind of saw his heart break in his eyes. I can imagine his pain. I know I would break down in tears if someone ever said something mean about him, whether he was there or not. We both just kept walking and we stopped talking. It was a long and silent walk. I don't know why she criticized what I was wearing. I was wearing leggings and a plain t-shirt. I felt better in junior year at one point. The bullying had gotten so bad that they would tweet about me and then throw me down farther if I tried to stand up for myself. They'd make up names for me and whisper them when I was doing presentations in class to throw me off. One time I found out my grandmother died while I was in class and one of the girls goes omg she's crying. Really loud. Thankfully my teacher didn't put up with her. They also bullied her daughter at points though I was the main target. She would tell them off. One even physically wrecked my school project. Anyway, one day I just couldn't handle it. During my free period I went to the auditorium and just cried. I didn't know the tech director was in there with some of my peers. They came up to me and I remember saying, how do you handle it when someone doesn't like you? And they all knew who I was talking about. I remember these sweet kids, most of them were a part of the LGBTQ community and they knew what it felt like to be bullied, told me they were jealous. 
They told me that I was beautiful and smart and that everyone in the school, it was a tiny school, liked me and they couldn't handle that. They also told me they couldn't handle that I was happy in life. That always stuck with me. It changed my view. The girls were all overweight and rude and mean. They were always complaining too. It was clear they weren't happy. Later on, one of them tried to sabotage me in senior year by taking my project I worked for months on and tore it to shreds. It was a truffle board and she ripped everything off of it and scribbled on it. The principal knew what I was going through and told me that if I thought it was sabotage they would treat it as such, which is reason to suspend or even expel. I believe in karma, so I told them I believed her that it was an accident and she was let go with a detention. While well, karma did get them. One of them was arrested a few weeks after graduation. Another was dumped by her boyfriend and is randomly suffering from hair loss. The third dropped out of college or was kicked out which is likely for her. But I did of course get my own little revenge on the girl who wrecked my project before graduation. We were friends for a few months in freshman year when we were both new. I had a stick of concealer in my backpack that she always borrowed. One day I realized it was what made me break out. I kept it in the bottom of my bag for 4 years without a cap collecting crumbs and dirt and bacteria. I had completely forgotten about it. Well this girl has the nerve to ask me to borrow it one day in senior year after wrecking my project. I gently wiped the top of it off so it appeared clean and let her borrow it. She came in later that week with horrible skin. She had broken out everywhere. I didn't even feel bad. Edit. Thank you for the silver and the kind responses. It was really truly amazing waking up to all of these warm and thoughtful responses. I felt alone for so long, and it feels really good to have people assure me it wasn't my fault. Your kindness is very much appreciated. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe the channel.